We are to wake up for morning devotion. I believe Peter is part of the people that wake up with Jesus in the morning for their morning devotion. And when they start for their morning devotion and they can't find Jesus, Peter is one of the few that will quickly go and look for Jesus. Where is he? And they will discover he has gone to the mountain to go and pray with him. Every time Jesus is doing anything wonderful, Peter is always there. When they were healing this and healing that, Peter was following Jesus. When 70 were sent out to go and perform miracles, Peter was part of the 70. When Jesus was by the uh, well in Samaria, with the woman of Samaria, Peter was there. Every process he followed. He was a worker. He was not just a worker, he was even a minister. Because if you look at the congregation of Jesus, he had a church of about 120 who were very regular. Then after that, he has 70 who are workers. Then he has 12 who can call ministers. Then three who can call senior ministers. If, you, if Jesus was the general pastor, then Peter was an AGU. Because well, we have uh, Peter, James, and John always following Jesus. They were the ones that were in Acacus. When Jesus wanted to discuss serious things, they were the ones. When Jesus finished preaching, and everybody look at Jesus and say, what you have preached today is too difficult. And they left Jesus and walked away. And Jesus looked at the disciples and said, ah, what are you still doing here? I believe Peter was one of the first that said, ah, this is the reason why we are still here. We have no place to go. We will stay with you. He has done so many things. Of course, he made mistakes along the way. He fell and he rise up, but he was actively following Jesus. When Jesus was in the boat and Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say I am? And they were all saying, uh, they said you are Elijah, some say you are uh, Isaiah, some say you are Moses, and they were saying all kinds of things. And when Jesus said, okay, that is what they say. You tell me who I am. Peter has studied Jesus to the extent that he's able to tell Jesus, this is who you are. And Jesus looked at him and said, wow, this is a rema. This is fantastic. This thing that you are saying, it is not just by word of mouth. The Spirit is with you. Peter was so good in the world that Jesus himself had to say, wow, that is fantastic. No wonder when Peter finally decided to preach, the first time he said Peter faced the crowd and preached, 3,000 people accepted Jesus immediately. Even the feet that probably Jesus himself did not do. Peter was able to do it. Peter was so good. He has followed him seriously. There's almost no service that they do that the disciples does not follow. So Peter was always there. But with all this, there was still a great battle coming in front of Peter. Peter himself did not know. He's doing everything he should do, but he's not privy to the information of what is happening in the spirit world. Sometimes we have done everything we should do. But we don't have an information of exactly what they are planning in the spirit world. Sometimes that voice that is telling you that no, 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 don't stay in Lagos. Go back, go back, go back, go back. It's just a divine plan, a big strategy to destroy you. And you don't know. And sometimes you ask for dreams. And Satan himself makes some funny dreams. And the mistake some of us make is when we have a dream that we like, that we think we like, we won't tell Pastor. We just say, ah, ah, Molala, I'm over in Cuba. You mean in Cuba? Ah. So you will go tell Pastor again. What do you have to tell Pastor again? You really know in Cuba. Yeah, just keep praying. I've had people that tell me, I tell them, do you have a dream? They say, yes, ah, I have a wonderful dream. I say, what is it? You say, Pastor, don't worry. It's a good thing, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Talk. By the time they will tell me the name, I will look at them and say, ha. And you call that one a good thing. Can't you see this and this and this and this that is going wrong in your dream? You now say, ha. I didn't look at it that way. I thought it was a good thing. Some of some people have had dreams. And they said, oh, tonight is a terrible night. Bro. Ah, the dream was so bad. By the time they will tell me the dream, I will say, why are you not celebrating? Can't you see the victory? 
So sometimes we can't, we have no idea what is happening in the spirit realm. At this point, we need God to pray for us. And that was happened to Peter. Jesus says, looked at him and said, Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to help you that he may sift you as a wheat. If you read the story before this place, Jesus was not talking about sifting. He was not talking about temptation. He was not talking about problem. He was having a general discussion. Jesus was talking to everybody generally. All of a sudden, he just turned to Peter and said, Simon, Simon, behold. Simon must have been thinking, what happened? Because Simon was one of the people that went to plant the dinner. When Jesus said, go, you will see a spirit. You will see a man follow him, tell him you don't want the room. Peter was the people that went to Peter. So when Jesus said, behold, Peter, he must have been looking at yes. Is it the rest that is not enough for the meat? What is the problem? But the story of God was something entirely different. Satan has decided to sift you. You have been following me, but he has decided to destroy you. You have been moving with me, but he has decided to turn you powerless. He has decided that he's going to take you like a witch and sift you away. Every good thing inside of you is going to take the away, even though you were working with me. Though you have been following me every day for three and a half years, Satan still have a target to destroy you. But I have prayed for you. No wonder if Jesus was not with Peter. If Peter was not with Jesus on that day. If Peter just said, sorry, we're having the Lord's Supper. But my wife and my children, they need me urgently. It's Passover too. It's our family's uh, tradition to only pass over with my family. They are the temple. Let me go and help them too. And they left, you will have missed that prayer. This morning, we are not in church to pray for ourselves. We are in church for Jesus to pray for us. And that's why this morning we have called these prophetic prayers. That is, the prayers we are going to pray this morning are not the prayers that we have prepared. And not the prayers that we believe in line with our topic. No. The prayers we have to pray this morning I'm going to pray seriously. They are prayers that God prophetically released because He has seen something that we have not seen. They are prayers that God has given to us. Not because we just do another prayer, but they might be funny, they might look crazy, but they are prayers that are necessary. I remember the testimony of a sister. She went to church. And they were praying. All of a sudden, God said, no. Change the prayer point to say snakes and serpents. And they started praying against snakes and serpents. The prayer point was just snakes and serpents. I believe she must have been one day. It was the snake and serpent with you. Uh -uh. Why are we doing snakes, snakes, snakes this morning? By the time she got back home, she lives alone. She's been single for a long time. She got to her bed. She saw something massive. Lying down on her bed with the cover clothes covering it. Sleeping as if a human being was sleeping. By the time she removed the cover clothes, it was a massive snake. Sleeping on her bed, but dead. So she had been sleeping with snake all this while. She never knew. She had been praying. She had been going to church. But that day God decided to have mercy on her. And decided that it's time for me to pray for you. Because if I leave you alone to pray, the last thing you pray for is a snake. But that is the number one problem that is affecting you. So this morning, we are not here to pray with our understanding. We are not here to pray our own special prayers. We are here to, for God to pray for us. And when God prays for us, He leads us to say the right prayers. And when we say the right prayers, He answers the prayers. I pray that this morning God will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. There was a nice thing I heard about God. That God is the one that will call you and say, I want you to go and do something for me. Then he will give you all everything you need 
to do what he has given you. Then he will go ahead of you to prepare the way so that you can go smoothly. Then when you get to the end, he'll be waiting for you. Then after you have finished it, you will now be working for two minutes. Who did the old job in the first place? Oh. It was God. He said that you are available. And the Bible says we are looking for a man who is available. This morning, the devil is looking for somebody who is willing to bow down and say, hey, please, tell me what to pray for. And I will pray for it. God promised me when I got to church and I went to pray at the back that this morning, if we connect to him, everybody's case will be mentioned. Amen. Everybody's issue will be dealt with. Amen. Sometimes we don't know what exactly the problem is. Sometimes you are looking at unemployment and you are asking God for a job whereas God has prepared the business. And you are just saying, God, if only I get a job, I just love jobs. And God knows that it's not a job, it's a business. Sometimes we need Him to pray for us. This morning, all we're going to talk to God about is that, that please pray for us. And that's why we started the service with that prayer. That we said, God, let me be the first person you will attend to this morning. I want my case to be the one you first mentioned. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what they are doing. But somebody is doing something somewhere. If Peter, who moved with Jesus? Peter, who was seeing Jesus face to face? Peter, who was eating with Jesus? Peter, who sometimes was alone in prayer with Jesus? When Jesus comes and says, Brethren, I feel in my spirit to pray. I need serious prayer. They are the ones that will follow you and say, Yes, we are in inner Kakos. Let's go and pray. If with all that, Satan can still plan to seek his life away and make him empty and nothing. I want you to know that today, for every Christian following God, that the same plan that the devil has to seek you away, to take away everything that belongs to you, to make you empty. Empty in such a way that you have to deny God and look for other things. But I pray for you this morning, that as God pray for you today, every plan of the devil will be destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said in Luke 22 verse 32, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou hast combated, strengthen thy brethren. The reason why God wants to strengthen you this morning, the reason why God wants to answer your prayer this morning, is because there are people around you who need to listen to your testimony. It is your testimony that will combat them and bring them to church. It is your testimony that will make them go back and say, yes, God can answer prayer. I, I pray for you, everybody that God has attached to you, that your testimony will combat. God will give you the testimony in Jesus' name. Yes. And it will combat them in Jesus' name. Yes. When we begin to have testimonies and God begins to pray for us and we to get answers to prayer, the world will begin to see that, yes, truly, God is God in our life. So this morning, we're not going to spend too much time in talking. It is time to pray. We're going to talk to God where you are still seated. We're going to talk to God and say, Father, Father if there is anything in my life, that will not allow you to attend to me this morning. Please have mercy. Begin to pray. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Oh God, mercy. Mercy, God. Mercy. 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 In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Like I said this morning, I will just be obeying God 100%. It will not be me. God said that that one or two of us here, there is something you are trying to overcome. Maybe a character, a flaw, or 
some things have been done to overcome you, you've not been able to overcome it. And that means chopping your mercy. That if you can cry to God for a second chance, He will give you another chance. If you can cry to God for a second chance. So, anywhere you are, I won't ask you to come out, but anywhere you are, if there is something you are battling with, you will not be able to overcome and it's negative to God, please go on your knees and just tell God that Father, give me a second chance. God, just give me a second chance. Give me a second chance. Anything we are battling with that we cannot overcome, just ask Him for a second chance. He's the one speaking to us this morning. His presence is here. Just ask him for a second chance. In Jesus, mighty name we are praying. Amen. Father, please for every one of us. It is not by power, it is not by might, it is only by your spirit. Please grant us a second chance in Jesus. Amen. Where our mercy has dried up, please grant us a second chance in Jesus. Amen. The Bible says your mercies are new every morning. This morning, give us new mercies in Jesus. Amen. Help us to start true with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't let our prayers this morning be a waste. Amen. Pray for us yourself. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Shall we rise up on our feet now? The first prayer point. I'm going to talk to God and say, Jesus, Jesus. Son of the Most High, Son of the Most High. Pray for me this morning. Begin to talk to him now. Jesus, Son of the Most High, pray for me this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Daddy just informed me now that the birds that we saw yesterday have been coming to your house for work. But unfortunately yesterday it met the end of his life. And the human being that it represents has the bird that died yesterday. By tomorrow that human being will be dead. Yeah. I'm going to talk to God now and say, my incomplete testimonies. My incomplete testimonies. He completed my fire. He completed my fire. Begin to pray now. In the name of Jesus. My incomplete testimonies. He completed my fire. In the name of
people have been committing suicide, and Nigeria is tough. What we have seen is child's play to what the devil is planning for the next half of the year. It's going to be tougher. But God just reminded me now. There was a day I went to market. I was buying something. They were walking on my car. I couldn't sit in the car. Because they raised the car up. There was nowhere to sit down. The rain started falling. And I told God, I don't want rain to follow. Brethren, where I was standing in the market, rain was falling all around me. Rain did not fall on me in the market, in Ladipo Market here. That's the next prayer we are praying. That the rain of affliction will not fall on me. Will not fall on my family. We cannot stop it from falling. The world has seen the rain will fall. People will commit suicide in more. Families will break up. But it might be falling on the Bible says with your eyes we see. It will not come near your dwelling place. I'm going to speak to you now. You reign of affliction. You reign of affliction. You cannot fall on me. You cannot fall on me. You cannot fall on my family. You cannot fall on my family. I speak to you in Jesus' name.
told me about this before. Just this way that God told me that there is something called an endless serpentine spirit. You will see the snake, you think you have killed it, but it's long, longer than you think. You've only killed the session, there are still others that come, they are long. Who do talk to God now? Endless serpentine spirit.
I was telling somebody yesterday that all these apples and fruits you are buying at ShopRite, those ones that are genetically modified, that you buy onion, you keep it in your house for three months, nothing will happen to it, but you stand by with it. I said before human beings on earth started doing it, they will do it in the water. My great grandfather will enter water for two weeks, it will not come out. By the time it's coming out of the water, it will come in with fantastic oranges, big apples. The ones that we have not started doing here, they've been doing it in the waters. Now there's something they say they want to start doing. Our doctors are not looking for it, and it has been happening before. They will have been using it. They know. They are witches themselves. They know that this is what the devil does, so they are trying to do it physically. Is that they will put a small robot, tiny into the blood. They will inject it into your blood, and you're looking for cancer everywhere. So anyway, you see cancer, you to kill it. That's the next level they are going on. They are still working on it. They've not been able to get it. It's easy to do in the spirit world. Now when you just do chapter after chapter, but physically, you need all the technology and everything before it can work. Now, why am I telling this? There are robots that the devil has planted in people's body. Sometimes they have sex with you in the dream, they planted robots. If they ever collected your blood or took your injection in the dream, it's a robot. They plant it into the bloodstream. It now goes inside and starts eating. Start destroying. I'm going to talk to God now. Every property of the enemy. Robots of the enemy. Robots of the enemy. Inside my body. Inside my body. 